Hello everybody and welcome back to 3D AF. Uh, my name is Xander and today we're going to take a look at how to program different temperatures at different layer heights. So for this project today we're going to use a, a pretty standard temperature tower that we use here in the shop for uh, checking print quality, temperature variance, bridging, and all kinds of stuff like that. We're gonna we're gonna do a full video on how to assess one of these in the very near future but for today we're gonna focus on how to set the temperature at different heights. So getting right into it, we're going to take a look at this temperature tower here. So as you can see, uh, we're using Cura today as one of the softwares that doesn't allow you to control the temperature variance at different heights. Uh, we're going to do this on our Creality Ender 3 with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So let's take a look at the print settings for this temperature tower. First of all, we got the layer height set to 0.2. The initial layer height is also 0.2 uh, because we're using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle our line width is 0.4 millimeter now this model is actually good for testing up to one millimeter and we'll be doing that separately as part of the same video uh, although we won't show the programming it's pretty much the same um, we've got a wall thickness of two millimeters and a top bottom thickness of 1.2 millimeters uh, an infill density of 5% uh, set to zigzag. Zigzag or grid are both good for this. In, in all honesty, you're not going to see that much infill throughout the print. We have an initial print temperature of 200 degrees Celsius. This is kind of the mid-range benchmark that I like to use for, uh, for PLA materials. Although, of course, if you're testing ABS or, or some other material, use a good benchmark temperature for that. Uh, and a build plane temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, print speed of 50 millimeters per second, and we've got our cooling on at 100%. Again, that one's going to be dependent on what kind of material you're using and whether it likes to be cooled. Um, and uh, for the last thing here, we are going to use a skirt, uh, which is just going to help us get the nozzle primed up and ready to go. So once we've got all of our settings together, we can hit the slice button here. And we're looking at 4 hours and 48 minutes, uh, around 29 grams of filament. So we're going to go ahead and save that out. And then we will edit the file so that way you can see how to input the code to control the temperature. After we posted out the file, we're going to go to the folder that it landed in, and we're just going to go ahead and quickly copy. And we're going to paste that right in there, and we're just going to change the name slightly. So the reason why you want to keep the original code is if you do make any mistakes, then you don't have to go all the way back to Cura and post it out again. You can just uh, come back through and make a quick change. So, once you're done with that, you can open it up. Uh, I'm using Notepad Plus. Uh, you can use Notepad Regular. Either way, it's just kind of a rich text format G-code. So you can go through and find the information that you're looking for. And what we're going to do once we get in here is we're going to use Control F. And then we're going to find the first Z height here, which is Z6. And we're going to wrap it on down there. So then we're going to copy in our little snippet of code right next to that. So that way it changes the temperature. So, before we go any further, it's important to note that any change you make inside this file can have devastating consequences if not done properly. So, only add the code that you know you need, try not to touch anything else, and if in doubt, throw it away and go back to that original copy, copy it again, and start the process over again. Alright, so... Now that we've got our snippet of code in there, the M109S220, which is to set the temperature and stabilize at a S temperature of 220, we can move on to the next portion of the code, which is at Z15.8, and we'll copy that into M109S215, very good, come along here. And you're just going to go on and continue to ent enter all these at the proper lines. Oh, made a little mistake there. Once I've gone on through and updated all the code, I like to take a second pass just to make sure that we entered all the information correctly. So again, we're going to use that uh, Control F for find. And we're just going to cycle on through. So we got Z6, M109, S20. That's excellent. Move on to the next one, so Z15.8, M109, S215, excellent. And, and so on and so on and so on. And the main 
point to doing this is to make sure that a your code is correct because you'd hate to print the entire temperature tower at the same temperature or with wrong temperature settings i've done it before it makes it very hard to discern what's going on and the second thing is you want to check the integrity of the code because any code related errors can create uh, machine malfunctions it can do crazy things with your temperature all in all you're going to have a bad time if you enter this code incorrectly so double checking is the truth to being a good machinist now that we checked all the locations, we can go ahead and just close that find window and we can save, close this out, and our program is ready to be transferred to our card or through Octoprint or however you choose to transfer your files. All right, so we've got our three Ender 3s all set up and ready to go. The two on the right are running this at 0.4 millimeter. The one on the furthest left just appearing now is done at one millimeter. And now we're into a large time elapsed to wrap up this video so that way you can see how the layers actually go down. Today's episode was brought to you by Squid Hats, the only hats for squids.